It's an English summer's day of the childhood kind. The sun is strong, and butterflies are tumbling in and out of my study windows. We're playing the West Indies at the Oval. So far, we've beaten them six times in a row. Three times in the West Indies, three times here. I hate to see the West Indies losing. I hate to see us losing as well. <laughs> what I would really like is for us to beat them by one close fourth and exciting match at the end of the series. A clincher that leaves everyone full of hope, looking forward to the next. Vaughan has just gone, and here comes Flintoff, who always reminds me of the cheery half of a Hausmann poem. Hale and hearty, a peerless youth, before Hausmann snuffs him out at the end of a rope. <laughs> the camera's doing a pan around the ground. The oval in the early evening, shadows and sunshine, grand, pretty full. England, yes, England. Still recognisably the same ground that Mummy brought us to. Nigel and me, when we were 11 and 10. She wanted to show us, to make us understand and feel. I took a break, walked around the garden, sat smoking in a sudden patch of sunshine. George and Toto and Errol settled around me, and Victoria in her study. I was not gone for much more than half an hour, I should think, with the video working to record Flintoff's innings, and came back in as he was saluting the crowd, who was saluting his half-century. <coughs> he stood with his bat raised, massive and young, blonde hair curling out from under his helmet, his eyes clear and joyful, fodder for the slaughter in 1917. <laughs> in, in Ypres or the Somme, body deep in the mud and entangled in barbed wire, hand outstretched, palm mysteriously clean, turned upward, doomed youth from the anthem. But here he is instead, the glorious young man of the moment, this moment, in the evening of August the 19th, in the year 2004. Standing in the London sunlight, in the centre of the television screen, <laughs> his bat held up as if he'll be there forever. Thank you.